show. It's August, which means it's time for the next installment in our 2020 patchwork calendar blanket. This month we're going to make the six patch stripe square. Traditional patchwork is full of shapes being made out of little strips of cotton or other fabric that they may have had lying around. So this month we are going to do something in that vein. This is a really simple pattern. You're basically just double crocheting back and forth for six individual stripes. Turn your brain off work, super scrap eater. I'm going to demonstrate the two color version, but of course, <laughs> I made another one too. This one's three colors. It looks like candy or Laffy Taffy or something. I absolutely love it. Mr. and Stitches is going to put in a couple of little graphs, just in case you need a little different color inspiration. You can do this with six different colors too. And of course, you can use it vertically. You can use it upside down whichever direction you want. Same kind of yarn, same hook size, same border color as all our previous squares. And that's all you need to know. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up the easy peasy August square together. In order to make our six patch stripe square, you're going to want to use the same yarn you've been using all along. For me, that's a size four medium weight acrylic yarn. The entire square takes around 81 yards. That's about nine yards for your border color. I'm using white and approximately 12 yards per stripe. So you can figure out how much yarn for each color you need based on whichever color design you're going to go with. I've got a three color design here. I'll be demonstrating a two color design today, but of course you can do this in six colors too. You also want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine in the US, a size five in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop and also how to join. And there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. As always, you may find it very helpful to draw yourself up a quick graph and color it in so you know where you are as we move through this square together. You can start by drawing a square and drawing a line to separate it into two halves and then drawing a line across twice more in each section to give yourself six roughly even colored stripes. Go ahead and color it in and we'll start crocheting. Our squares stripes are numbered one through six. So number one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to start down here at the bottom of our square. So whatever color you've got in there for patch number six, we're going to start with that. Take your yarn. We're going to begin, begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 38 to begin. Once you've chained a length of 38 chains, count them up, make sure you've got 38. We're going to be using the double crochet stitch throughout this project. You're going to count three chains away from the hook. So one, two, three, find the fourth and double crochet into the fourth chain away from the hook. So that little chain three turn. So these little guys here, these three chains are going to count as a double crochet and the chain three here counts as a double crochet, but only for row one. You're going to double crochet into each chain all the way back. That chain three counts, so in total you will have 36 stitches at the end of row one. At the end of every row you will have 36 stitches, so every single row in this block is 36 stitches. That includes the little turning chains at the end. For every other row from here on out, a row begins with a chain two, so we chain two, turn our work, and the two chains at the beginning of each row counts as a double crochet. 
Now, because we're using the counts or we're counting the turning chains as a stitch, you're not going to be using the first stitch of your row. So you consider those turning chains a stitch. They are technically sitting on top of that stitch. This stitch is accounted for, always skip it. Instead, you work your first real double crochet into the next stitch. You double crochet in each stitch all the way across for every single row, always taking care to skip that first stitch. It's accounted for because of your turning chains. And when you get to the end of a row, make sure you catch the top of the chain three in this case, or for successive rows, the chain two, because that counts as a stitch and you don't want to miss it. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get up there. As we near the end of row two, and we've been double crocheting in every single stitch all the way across, you come up to the chain three. That was the chain three or the three turning chains that we're counting as a stitch. So make sure you double crochet the last stitch of row two into the top of that chain three. And I like to turn it, sort of turn it towards me and get underneath a couple of loops and then just double crochet as normal. That's it. For row two, you have 36 stitches all the way across. That includes your little chain two turning at the beginning. For row three, and every row, we chain two to begin. Always skip that first stitch because it's included or it's accounted for. Work your first real double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet in each stitch across. Double crochet into the top of the chain two. Chain two is a little shorter than the chain three, so I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. At the end of row three, and every row from here on out, the last stitch you work will be in the top of the chain two. So if you turn it around, you can sort of see the two chains there. I like to take the chain, turning chains, twist it towards me, and then identify sort of the top of it. Just stick my hook there. I try to get two of the loops. I just feel like it makes it a bit more of a sturdy anchored stitch. And that's it, 36 stitches in each row, and that includes the turning chains at the beginning. That is it for our first stripe. At the end of a patch or a stripe, so three rows per stripe, you finish three rows, that's a stripe. You finish that third row of the stripe, fasten off, pull that nice and tight, flip it over. So you always want to begin the next row as though you didn't change colors. So you fasten off and then flip your stripe and then your growing block so that you can begin in the top of the last stitch from the previous row. And that'll be right here, easily recognizable because it's marked by your little tie. We're going to consult our graph. We've just finished with stripe or patch number six. We're moving on to patch number five. For me, that's pink. So we're gonna pick up our yarn we all begin with a slip knot. Make sure that you are joining your yarn every single time you join a new color. It's always in the top of the last stitch from the previous row and it's pretty easy to tell which one that is if you leave your tails out. I'll be working over top of my tails. We're going to insert our hook through the top of the last stitch from the previous row. I will be working over top of all of my short tails because I find that makes things a little bit easier and neater. Join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of that last stitch right there and chain two. Every row begins with a chain two and it's really easy to see now why that chain two counts as a stitch because it's actually sitting now in the, st the top of that actual stitch so it's easy to see. I'm going to pull my knots and my tails into sort of the inside of my work so that my edges are nice and smooth. And we begin double crocheting. Double crochet into the next stitch of every row at the beginning. Always double crochet into the next stitch because that first stitch is always already accounted for because of the chain two. Double crochet in each stitch across. Make sure you double crochet in the top of the chain two from the previous row. Don't skip it, it'll throw off your stitch count Every single row will have 36 stitches in it. And you're going to work three rows in total for this color for our fifth patch or our fifth stripe in our little block. We're working it from the bottom up. And I'll catch up with you at the end of our sixth row or our second stripe.
just finishing the third row of my second stripe or patch number five or row number six of the whole square. So it's the sixth row. It's the third stripe in that color or the third row I should say in that color for my fifth patch. <laughs> Throwing around a lot of numbers here. So each stripe is three rows of color. That's all you really need to know. Make sure that you don't miss that chain two at the end of every row and that's where you work your last stitch. When you're finished a color, so you finished a stripe, that's three rows of a single color, fasten off, not that nice and tight, flip it over so you know that you're always starting over here. Grab your graph, there's patch six, patch five, we're into patch four now. I'm going back to blue, whatever color you're moving back to, pick it up. Every row begins the same way. When you're joining a yarn or a color, it's always the same thing. We start with a slip knot on our hook. We join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of the last stitch that we made from the previous row. I like to tug my tails and knots inward so that I keep my edges nice and smooth. Every row begins with a chain two. Chain two counts. Double crochet into the next stitch to begin every single row. Double crochet each stitch across. Every row has 36 stitches. Don't forget the top of the chain two. Every stripe has three rows to it. I will let you go for the rest of the square. Make sure you refer to your graph when you're changing colors, just so you know you're in the right patch. And uh, I'll catch up with you near the end of the square. Okay, I have finished the last row of my last stripe. I've got six stripes. Each stripe is three rows tall. There are 36 stitches in each row. So this was row 18 that I just finished. I fastened off and I flipped it just like I would for any other finished stripe. It's time to add our border now. So I'm going to use my white yarn. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. Just like every other color join in this particular square, we're going to slip our hook into the top of the last stitch we made. Join with a slip stitch, chain two to begin. That chain two counts as a double crochet. And like every other row, we're going to double crochet into the next stitch, into each stitch across and into the top of the chain two. That'll be 36 stitches to start and I'll catch up with you there. My last stitch along the top of my square, so stitch number 36, lands in the top of the chain two. And now we're going to turn and work down the first side of our square. We're gonna chain two, this just turns the corner. And we're gonna work a double crochet, two in fact, into the side of each stitch. So two double crochet per row edge, or six double crochet per edge of stripe. So whichever is easier to think of or look at, that's what you need to do. So we're going to work our first double crochet into the same place that we worked our last double crochet. You can do that here. We're just going to start working our way down the edge. And whenever you are working a double crochet or a stitch of any kind through the side of a stitch, I try to get at least two loops of the stitch on my hook. So I'm bisecting a stitch, a chain, whatever happens to be there. I'm not working around the entire stitch. I am sticking my hook through it and I'm trying to get a couple loops on top. So I've got two rows left in my first stripe. I wanna evenly space out my double crochets as best as I can. There's no real, no real uh, rules here. <laughs> Just kind of put your hook where it feels comfortable. I try to get a couple, I try to get through a stitch or through the chains. And I try to always make sure I'm getting at least two things, two loops over top of my hook. I feel that that just creates a stronger anchor for the stitch and it doesn't pull. So we chain two to turn the corner and we've worked two double crochet into the edge of each row 
down the first patch. So two double crochet for the side of each row. That's six double crochet per stripe. And that's all you need to know. You could just kind of continue working double crochets, work through the stitch, not around it, all the way down, and I'll catch up with you at the bottom. That's two double crochet per row edge, or six double crochet along the edge of each stripe all the way down. So that's another 36 stitches in total. At the bottom, I've got two double crochet worked into the edge of each row of my patch number six, so it's the bottom patch. I'm gonna chain two to turn the corner, and I'm gonna work the first double crochet that's going to go along the bottom of my square into that chained space, so that chain space that's right next to my tail where I began the whole thing. And you're going to double crochet into the bottom of each stitch all the way across. So I like to grab that short tail and tug it in, and that will just sort of help clean up that corner. And now I'm going to work over top of that short tail, and you're just double crocheting into each of those foundation chains, the underside of each of those stitches across the bottom of the square. So you'll still have 36 stitches across the bottom. And I'll catch up with you at the next corner. That's 36 stitches all the way across the bottom of our square now. The last double crochet is worked into the chain, or the foundation chain, which is actually at the bottom of those three turning chains that we sort of used for our first stitch in row one. We're gonna chain two, turn the corner, and it's just exactly the same as the other side. Two double crochet per row edge, or six double crochet per stripe, however it helps to look at it. I'm gonna work my first double crochet into the same place that I worked my last one. So I'm just turning a corner, and then I'm gonna evenly space the next five out along the edge here, and I'm gonna try and make sure that I get a couple of Oops, all right, I have to do that. Sometimes that first stitch coming out of the corner is a little funny. Just take your time, work your way up the last side of your square, and I will catch up with you at the top. That's 36 double crochet, worked up the last side of our square. I worked my last double crochet, number 36 for that side, or number 144 in total, into the same place that I joined my yarn initially and chained two. I'm gonna chain the last two for the last corner that turns me back around. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two that began the whole thing. I'm going to snip my yarn. There we go. Fasten off. And before I weave in my tails, I'm just going to take a moment to pull out my little corner spaces. I always like to do this when I finish a square. Pull out the corners, kind of flatten things out a little bit. Sort of stretch it, stretch it into shape. I'm not going to be doing any blocking of these squares until we have the whole thing put together into a blanket. So don't worry about blocking anything right off the top. You can grab your yarn needle, weave in that tail along the back of those stitches. So across the back there. And that is our August square, the six patch stripe. All done. And there you have the August square, six simple stripes you can use in any direction you choose. We hope you had fun whipping this up with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.